Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Close Combat 2, A Bridge Too Far, our Let's Play series playing as the Allies. It is toward the end of the first day of Market Garden, 1800 hours at Oosterbeek, I think we'll have one more battle at Arnhem, um, we, won, we just won the battle for sort of the suburbs, so we're going to begin making our way toward the bridge, there's three more sectors to get to it looks like we've got a day one 1900 hours as being our next battle there um but in today's video uh, or, or stream we're going to be fighting at oosterbeek which where we fought previously uh, and we're overrun um or almost overrun we, we kept parts of the map but we were not able to hold big chunks of the map and so th this is our force this is what we have a three-inch mortar team, and a Vickers heavy machine gun. That's all we got. Um, so <laughs> we have a few points because we did a four-hour ceasefire. We have six points. We can allocate those six points to a single recon team, which is three men with submachine guns, or we can allocate it to two half-team of Lee Enfield rifles. Now, the only bad thing about the half teams is they don't have as much experience. They're not as good in terms of their quality, uh, but it is what it is. Alternatively, we could also purchase four snipers or three snipers. I'm going to guess while they might pin the enemy down, they won't kill a whole lot of people. The Vickers might be, might be a godsend in a big wide open map like this, but I think we'll go with a half team of Lee Enfield uh, two half teams of Lee Enfields. Recon to spot for the mortars. The mortars won't do enough damage, I don't think, on their own. So we'll go ahead with the, the AB ad hoc rifle. We can use them as a recon group anyway. And we'll take a look at what we have here on the map. We actually possess both landing zone one and two. Um, we possess the cottage and two Osterbeek. The Germans, meanwhile... In theory, should be surrounded. They possess, they possess the farmhouse in the center of the map, and then they can also deploy troops on the southern end near the roadway um, or in the, the, the far northwest near um, some fields. So the good news is we've got a two-story cottage building that's made of concrete, so it's more sturdy, and so we're going to put the Vickers there. It's like a gray stone building. Uh, we will go ahead and, where are the, where are the rest of my troops? Uh, take our, the one problem is I don't know where to put the mortar team. They're going to be pretty exposed here in this trench, but I guess, I, I think they'll get some cover here. Alternatively, I could put them behind this hedge, which would give them concealment, but not a whole lot of cover. We're also going to put one AB, a, ad hoc team in the cottage. And then I think we'll put one... I want to make sure the enemy doesn't like sneak up on me again like they did last time. So maybe put one of these guys back here behind these these hedges. So if the enemy does move this way, we can see him move across the open open ground. We could also put our mortar team back here. Maybe they wouldn't be sighted. I'm not sure. Or we could put them opposite of this hedge, but then if there's enemy troops, new troops coming on the field here, they'll definitely be in some trouble. There's no real good spot here. They're going to be exposed no matter what. I guess the one good spot would be LZ1. They'd be concealed on all sides. But they'd not be close enough for accurate rifle fire, I don't think. We're going to set all these troops to defend all of these troops, as if I have a lot. I guess we'll just move this guy, these guys here to this trench. Closer to the cottage for support. And we'll begin. We've already spotted an SS Sturmgrenadier unit down here. Got 29 rounds. Nice! First shot out, a German soldier. Wow! 
dead. Recon down there. Observe unit here. So we'll fire on these guys in this wood. We've also got SS Schultzen back here. So also got one of the recon troops. So one recon troop killed at least. At least one member of the SS killed. One member of the Schultzen killed. Hell yeah, guys. Pin these fuckers down. Ooh, you're shooting a little bit. A little bit short. Did I just hear hand-to-hand -hand combat? It sounded like someone got bayoneted. Nice. So two incapacitated, one panicked, only one remaining effective soldier in this reserve unit here in the woods. Twenty-two rounds left. Man, we're we're hearing a lot of Germans sound like they're dying. These guys are in this hedge. Switch fire to this Schultzen. What's Stum going to do? There sounds a lot like there's a MG42 somewhere around here. Oh, MG42 is here. Can't really see the troops, but I can. Right, the Vickers is pinned down now. That's not great. Can I drop on this reserve as he tries to crawl away? Who even needs bar units? Well, the Bren was an effective weapon, right? The British kept the Bren in service. Well, not the British, but the Bren was in service with other countries until forever. We got another one. This mortar is doing work. Switch that fire, actually. And we will turn the tide and route the Germans from the map. Not super optimistic of that, but you never know. The other thing to keep in mind is every day that you fight, you lose more ammo, and you have to make strategic choices between days of where you want that resupply to occur. I do think you need to have... Um, your LZs in your control in order to resupply, but I could be wrong on that. I'm assuming that's their function. Right, do we dare take this ad hoc unit here and crawl them into the woods and farmhouse and try and retake these sections of the map? I do dare. Dropping mortars on these Sturm Grenadiers. One man panicked, one dead. MG42 still in this hedger line somewhere down here. My Vickers are pinned down. No, they're still shooting. How many rounds do we have left? Ten. Probably should have dropped smoke to cover these guys as they crawl. Someone just got wounded, I think, on my side. Vickers unhurt and hawk unhurt. Yeah, it looks like one of these sneaking soldiers. It's a walking wound. He can continue. Oh, nice. The Sturm Grenadiers must have taken a direct hit on one of those mortar rounds. Two dead, one incapacitated, one walking wounded, one healthy. So that unit is in bad shape. Man, this, this battle has gone 180 degrees different than the last one on this, this map. Germans are probably crawling toward LZ-1. Schultzen. Right, we have seven HE rounds left. Probably 
Oak should drop on, on this group. This is the uh, one of the healthiest units left I've seen. Interesting. You just got up to move a bit. Mortar out. Yeah. Well, they're right here. They're both crawling near that fire point. I love the sound of mortars sliding down tubes. That shunk. Just love it. Since you're right over here, you might as well sneak for the woods and take it back. Then we'll sneak for the farmhouse, and if we take both of those, then we may just try to end the battle. No one getting hit by these mortar shells? You guys are crawling around in circles like you don't know what to do. Go sneak back here for this farmhouse. They're standing. Drop a mortar when they're standing. Man, you're overshooting. I guess you are shooting blind. You only have one round left. You do have smoke. But right now, I feel like smoke would do the enemy more good than it would me. Interesting that the whole mortar team has stens. Last round out. I would think the Germans... Oh, wait. There's someone in here. Panzer Shrek? Move fast and assault them. Two versus three, but only two are in the front, or maybe only one in the front. I don't know where the other the third guy is. Get him. Get him. Got them both. Panzer Shrek knocked out area secured. Wiped out that enemy team. So this Schultzen's the only healthy team left. But I've got all the objectives, so I'm going to go ahead and accept a ceasefire. You've decided to flee from... Oh, wait, no. All right. The battle ended because both sides agreed to a ceasefire. The Allies gained control of the area, but the Germans are expected to launch a counterattack. The landing zone has been reclaimed by the Allies, which is hella important as we're about to bring in some resupply. And progress is 80 out of 80. So there you go. Eleven German KAs. We didn't lose a man. Whew. Two distinguished uh, conduct awards. Presumably from the mortar team. Although it looks like the, uh, the ad hoc here, they did, they got a couple. They got that Panzer Shrek team as they came in. The mortar team here had claims on 2-2-1. Two, two, I don't know the difference between the yellow and the white. And, man, that Vickers team is the one that did the work. 6-6-6. Six, six, and six. Oh, my God, the devil's coming. I, I'm assuming the white is this battle and the yellow is total? Not really sure. Also, good news, we gained some experience for our ad hoc teams, which are generally less experienced. So that ends the battle for the Battle of Oosterbeek LZ. We'll go for an overnight ceasefire because that's the choice. And that brings us to the next Arnhem Bridge sector battle, Arnhem Tree Road. So we're on our march to the bridge. We probably will not get there today. Arnhem Bridge Road. We have three operations points to spend. And be careful not to let fire from across the river slow you down. Secure your objectives and press on to Arnhem. The road to Arnhem should still be clear, so speed is paramount. So we had one of our light ad hoc teams get wiped out last battle. I 
think they were the only ones to lose any can take any casualties though. And I think we routed the Germans from the map last battle too. Um, we have a two thirds section of a recon section. Actually, they took one casualty last battle, two full rifle sections, each with one casualty and an un an undamaged AB ad hoc rifle, as well as a single three inch mortar. We have three operations points to assign more troops. We could go with a sniper, another half team, or a piot. Hmm. So it looks like we have to be, we're on the southern side of the river here. We're presumably going to take fire from the north side of the river. We have to drive west. It's going to be an open field. There's going to be a few buildings that are going to command the sector. You're saying sniper brass. My only concern is I don't know that I have enough troops to assault anything without, without more infantry. But it's either that or a Piat, and I'm hoping we're not running into armor quite yet. So I think we'll go with a sniper. I guess that's okay. We'll try that. All right, so I've not played this battle, if ever, and, and then in a really long time. You can see, obviously, built up stuff opposite the river. That's going to be a problem. Uh, two Arnhem, Museum, Underlangs, Utrechtsvig. And the train station. The train station is probably where the enemy is going to sit most of its troops. Um, we could try moving through these houses here south of the railroad tracks and maybe just sneak behind these trees to Arnhem. Put the sniper here. Well, these are both concrete buildings. So put the sniper here. Set them to defend. Okay. I'm going to try and keep as many of these guys behind these houses here on the southern edge of the map as possible. Every man to the south. Hide behind the houses. These tall buildings should protect you from fire from a long ways away. Three inch mortar. Probably should put one rifle section in a building with the sniper, but I think we'll do that for the building that's a little bit further forward. Put the recon section over here, north of the building, to sneak. The problem with the recon section is they have SMGs. All right, that's all my troops. Vivo crawl. And so I was, someone commented on one of my videos saying like these white buildings are basically wooden buildings and don't provide you much cover. The, the concrete looking buildings provide much more cover against infantry weapons. And then like the stone or whatever, the, basically the three different, you've got the gray, the white, the brown, and this like sort of concrete stone. And they, they provide varying levels of cover against enemy fire. Shit. Panzer Shrek is in this building? Of course they are, because they're just going to be directly in front of me, right? Move completed. Well, we took a casualty. Move completed. Panzer Shrek destroyed. Our rifle section lost one killed, one wounded. The recon, I don't know if recon units are better at assaulting buildings or not. They do have um, SMGs, so maybe that would make them better at assaulting buildings. Hold right click. I don't know if you can hold right. All right, German troops are moving this way. And also in this three-story SS reserve. These guys are in the open, so I'm going to try and mortar them. 
Oh, right on top of the house. Too bad it didn't break through the roof. Would have been nice to hit between. Move completed. Now, cover fire would would be or smoke to cover our advance could be an ideal move before we advance on the train station. We know they have an SS reserve section here, which appears to be two soldiers. We know they have Schultzen back here in the house behind, which looks like a full section of infantry. So these guys are going to be deadly. They're in a house that's providing them a good deal of cover. There's only two troops in here. They might be pulling back, too. This train station's a big building. I'm going to try and sneak into the train station. If there's really only two Germans in there, we can pin them down with the fire from across the way. We'll drop smoke here to block enemy enemy sight from this building. Although it looks like they're moving now. Drop HE on them when they're in the open. Because they're going to move for the train station. Come on. Well, we got someone. It looks like there's two sections of troops, though. Or maybe just one, and it's just a really big one. I definitely heard at least one German casualty. Sneak along this roadway here. It says reserve, just the two men still sighted here. The infantry may have repositioned to this three story building, but not totally sure. They've got seven men. I don't know how many troops the Germans have either. So they would outnumber this rifle section here that I'm moving forward. And of course, the moment I order them to switch to smoke, they change their fire. Move completed. Oh, wow, they took several casualties. Wonder if there's two different rifle sections then. Quick to get inside here. Like this SOS reserve. Before the other German troops get inside. This is one of those houses that's multiple building, multiple rooms. It's probably in either this room or this room here. Sounds like some hand-to-hand -hand combat. Can't really see. One of, them, one of them is incapacitated. That mortar round just hit someone. I'm guessing it was what was left of the... Um, 
Let's adjust our mortar fire slightly. We don't have that many rounds left. Move These guys might be pinned in the open. I'm not sure. I need support in this train station. Actually, these guys should be moving. The ad hoc should stay here. Provide overwatch. Recon should move. I'm assuming their SMGs play better inside. So we destroyed that reserve rifle section. This Schultz in here is badly, badly damaged. Two incapacitated, a panicked, and a killed. Three healthy men left. We have three mortar rounds left. Let's hold your fire. Sounded like someone just panicked or got hit or something. And repositioning back here. Fuck. How's the sound? Is there directionality to it? Like in my ear, in my headset? Don't know, I don't use surround. And I only generally have one ear with a muff on so I can hear outside of my speaking. Alright, so... So Schultzen... Is this the only other German unit? There's gotta be more. Rounds complete. Let's smoke these fuckers up. Hit him. Move completed. Gotta get him back to the rear of this house. Well, now my own smoke is blocking my line of sight. All right, their panicked guy is back. Oh, we win. It must have it must have just been that last unit. Eight German KIA, one missing. We took one casualty. Do I think Germ the war would have been over by Christmas? Probably not in like two months, but it might have ended sooner. The battle ended because the Germans were routed from the map. The Allies gained control of the area and will advance... German forces took excessive losses. Allied progress is 60 out of 110 expected. So obviously we didn't take the bridge on day one, but we did manage to take the first three objectives in the Rhine Bridge. We suffered one killed in our AB rifle section, and that's it. We had one walking wounded also in that same section. And actually, look, the Germans had an SS Schulten unit that was almost in perfect strength. Two men left there, the rest incapacitated or KAA. The SS Reserve Section of KA inc incapacitated. The sniper, who's okay, and the Panzer Strike Unit, which is knocked out. So a victory there. And so now we are at our point where we have to choose. You can direct Allied airdrops to one sector each day. You cannot provide road supply to isolated units. And so because we don't have the bridge over Sawn rebuilt yet, we don't have the ability to resupply Sawn by road. And we have to choose. This is one of those big end-of-day moments where we have to choose who we want to resupply. Now, what I don't understand, I don't fully understand, is how it factors supply. I don't know if it actually looks at the ammunition that you use in a battle and then looks at it afterwards. 
I don't think it gets down to like how many mortar rounds did you use, but it could take a look at all the units in your, your complement and see how many round, what percent of their starting ammo versus post battle ammo was left in each battle. And maybe that factors into supply. I'm not really sure. I've, I've looked through the manual. It's not very clear to me. Um, and so we now have to make a decision to do supply for airdrops in either Eindhoven, Nijmegen, or Arnhem. Now, Eindhoven's supply situation on the whole is not great. The Vigil section is at 74%. Sawn is 82 and Schindel is 82 Sawn should get the bridge up and running in 14 hours, so tomorrow they will have more supply. Um, and so I think we will, and so they might even get some road supply points. I'm not sure, but we're not going to waste an airdrop on Eindhoven because they're going to be relieved so soon. Gruspeak Heights is the only section of Nijmegen that we've engaged so far, and they're at 91%, which is pretty damn good. And so what that means is Arnhem. I don't know if I have to pick like the actual section. Um, like it lets me choose. I don't think it matters down to that level, but in theory, we'll choose Arnhem bridge just because supply is the lowest at the Arnhem bridge. So the troops who are making a run for the Arnhem bridge. have the lowest supply. We'll go ahead and airdrop to Arnhem. That did that not? Okay. So we will airdrop. Looks like I have to actually select the aircraft. Okay. So also, depending on the the area. So if I just focus everything on Oosterbeek, I can get it to ninety percent. But if I click air for both <laughs> Oosterbeek and Arnhem, then it gets to 62% on Arnhem, 91% for Oosterbeek. If we drop Oosterbeek, we can get Arnhem up to 69%, which I think is the route to go. I don't think the counterattacks toward Oosterbeek will be too strong yet, although I do need requisition points to rebuild those destroyed units. So maybe we go with this, because we'll still have 41 requisition points for Arnhem Bridge. Give me two more requisition points for Oosterbeek. I go air with Nijmegen, I can get them to 100%, but I don't. And no one's in road supply yet. So we'll have 41 requisition points for the Arnhem Bridge sector, which will be nice. 17 for Oosterbeek. That should let me buy... We'll, I mean, we probably don't need support weapons for Oosterbeek because we've got a, a Vickers and a 3-inch mortar. So that means we can probably get like two full Bren sections. So that'll strengthen us up pretty good, especially since we didn't take any casualties in the last battle. What's the view movie do? September 18th. The second Allied airdrop is delayed by poor weather in England. More than half the supplies are captured by Comp Group Felt and Grosbeck and Von Tito and Arnhem when they retake Allied landing zones. Nijmegen and Eindhoven gain strength from the Allied reserves. But in Arnhem, they are dropped in the midst of a conflict with the Dutch SS causing heavy losses. General Urquhart remains out of contact during these crucial hours. British troops, unable to help Frost on the Arnhem bridgehead, retreat west to Oosterbeck. Frost ignores an offer to surrender and fights on, still expecting 30 Corps to arrive later that day. With no surviving bridges over the Wilhelmina Canal, 30 Corps begins construction of a Bailey Bridge in San. Comp Group von Tito begins to encircle the British Arnhem units. The Jungwerth Fallschirmjäger training battalions apply pressure along the 17 miles of Hell's Highway. This narrow stretch of road is the focus of the only serious German threat south of Arnhem. Okay, so we get an end of day or beginning of next day video. All right. So we'll go ahead and we already picked the airdrop resupply. Arnhem Bridge is still going to be kind of low at 62%, but... I need those requisition points. All right. 
I can't lose the LZ, right? That would be bad. Okay. And there you go. We move right into day two, which is going to move to Gurus Beak Heights. Presumably, we have to defend the landing zone for the 82nd. We really need to start making a move for the uh, Nijmegen Bridge. We haven't even done that yet. Um, but, yeah. So, we're going to have to do that. I wish I could scroll around the different sectors. You can see 30 Core is still at the Son Bridge. They broke through at Valkensvard and are up to here. But they're working on that Bailey Bridge. When it says it's 14 hours, I hope it's 14 calendar hours. So, like, I hope it's... By 1,400 hours, they'll be across. I hope we get six free hours of no fighting, but I don't know. The British could be taking a tea break. I don't know. Um, Grus Peak Heights here, landing zone here. 21 operation points to start, this, start the day. That's a pretty good amount for troops that I don't think took too many casualties. Yeah, these guys are in pretty good shape. 60 millimeter mortar, 30 cal machine gun, two rifle sections with one casualty, three bar sections with no casualties. With 21 operations points, I could buy an anti-tank gun. Or not. I don't know if the Germans have tanks at Nijmegen yet. I don't think they do. <laughs> um... Flamenwerfer. We could go for an 81 millimeter mortar. That would use more than half our points. We could go for more infantry. I do think we'll go with another grand section to bring us up to three rifle sections. Leaves me with 13 points. I don't want to use sector requisition points on this fight in case we need something later in the day. Um... So what do we do with the remaining 13 points? Do I not have a sniper option? Oh, I do. Could go with an 81 millimeter mortar. More mortars is always good, right? So we'll go to the rifle section, a sniper, and I will use one rec one sector requisition points. We'll go with an 81. So we'll have an 81 millimeter mortar, a 60 millimeter mortar, a 30 cal, a new rifle section, a new sniper section. So at the end of the day, we'll have three full complement bar sections, basically three full complement rifle sections, a sniper, two mortars, and a machine gun. Man, this fight was a bloodbath last time with everybody like collapsing on this three story building. It has the potential to be once again. Um, I forgot how ugh, gross this map is. I put the 30 here, but they might be open to flanking fire. Well, they won't be able to see anything over there. If I put them on here. I really hope this isn't another one of those, like, every time you fight on this map, you've got to rush. Because I could easily get two whole sections just wiped out.
Okay. Put the mortars back behind this stone wall, this rifle section. We'll put it in the north so they can crawl toward the gun pits. I think it's kind of silly how we just, you know, gave up on our uh, hard-won positions at the end of the last battle. Okay, well, let's see how this goes. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Tanks! Uh. Ceasefire, please. Like, right away. Right the fuck away. Well, a 30 cal already got massacred. Oh god, Panther. No! Where did these, these guys came, got here pretty damn fast. Uh, I don't even know what to do. Everybody hide. Someone just got wiped. Oh my god, there's so many Germans. Where the fuck did these guys... I guess I had a lot of points. There's another tank. How many fucking tanks? Let me out. I don't want to surrender all the objectives, but oh God. Uh, I didn't think the tanks would show up on, on the landing zone so goddamn fast. Sniper got the brick wall next to him blown away. Oh my god. Yeah, we're not fighting on the Arnhem map, Neuhauser. And I didn't think they arrived at Nijmegen that fast. By six in the morning of the next day? Goddamn cowards surrendering. I already chose ceasefire. They haven't accepted it. We could surrender the whole map to the Germans, but then we lose the LZ. May need to do that to save some of our troops. Yeah. 
Five soldiers? I don't want to do that. Who am I all going to lose? Well, there goes some of the 81 millimeter mortar. All the troops in the south are pretty much dead. Fuck it. Three soldiers. I don't know who they are, but. Oh my god. We lost 26 men. <laughs> 26 killed, four wounded. The Germans lost seven men. That's it. So, our bar section here wiped out, including one surrendered. We did have one relatively intact bar section. The troops were moving for the gun pit in the north. I was able to withdraw as soon as we saw that armor, and they did not get hit too hard. Second bar section here in the south wiped out. Two surrendered, three K, one incapacitated. Rifle section, I don't know where these guys were. They might have been in the north. There's still three OK there. Two rifle sections in the south totally wiped out. 81 millimeter mortar took one incapacitation. 60 millimeter mortar's fine. Sniper surrendered. 30 cal wiped out. Should have gotten those anti tank guns, huh? Uh, they didn't have casts on this game. In real life, uh, I know the British were supposed to have it, but they were never able to get the radios to work right. I don't know if the Americans had gas over Nijmegen. Uh, seven hour ceasefire, please. We'll see what the Germans want to do. So we're going to move forward to Nijmegen Bridge, right? <laughs> don't worry, boys. I sure will be okay. Looks like we'll have 23 points by the next battle at Gruz Peak Heights. I do know the Allies were driven off the landing zone at Gruz Peak at one point, I think, right? But in any event, that'll be another story for another time. Until next time, this is the historical gamer saying, what a great start and a disastrous finish. I didn't think the German armor arrived that soon at in Nijmegen. I thought it was focused Arnhem initially, but... In any event, uh, we'll have to see how we respond to losing the LZ near the Nijmegen Bridge. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.